I'll be the first one to say this, but the original HomePod was a disaster. It pretty much priced itself out of the equation versus all the other smart speakers at that time. But you know what? It looks like Apple's redeeming itself with the HomePod mini. It's small, yes, but don't let its small size fool you. Here's our review of the Apple HomePod mini. Before I get started this video, I just want to remind you guys to give this video a thumbs up if I'm doing a good job. And also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all our latest content. Let's talk about its size. It's smaller, a spherical design. It's a stark departure versus the original HomePod's design. And I like it because with the smaller size, it means it's gonna be more discreet. It's gonna be able to fit in tighter spaces. Whereas with the original HomePod, it really stood out. It still has some of the same design characteristics as before. So that includes the mesh fabric around the unit. It still attracts my cats who thinks it's scratching posts, but since it's smaller, they're less inclined to actually scratch it. I personally like the new spherical design. It's different. It's very similar to the Amazon Echo, which I also like. So it's modern, it's contemporary, it fits any decor. You have the touch sensitive controls on top, the volume controls, and that nifty looking animation whenever Siri's talking or playing music. Now, the only complaint I have about design is the cord itself. It's a little bit on the shorter side. It has a USB-C connection on one end, but it doesn't seem like you could remove this cord. I know with the original HomePod, you could yank it out, but I tried very hard this one and it seems to be fixed. Because of its smaller size, I was a little bit concerned that maybe it wasn't gonna be as powerful as its peers, but I'm actually surprised by the performance of the HomePod mini. It features a full range driver with dual passive radiators and it's accompanied by the Apple S5 chip, which does this magical thing called computational audio, which I'll go into more detail in a little bit. But as far as the audio performance concerned, it's great for all spaces. So whether it's the living room, your office, it fills the room with its audio. There's a bigger emphasis here with the highs and mids. It seems to really emphasize them. The bass is good, even at the loudest setting, I never once heard it crackle with the bass and those highs and mids are still retained. So as far as music's concerned, it's great. Is it better than the Nest Audio or the Amazon Echo? I wouldn't say so, but it still delivers incredible sound. For me, the most exciting part about the HomePod mini is computational audio. So the way it works is the S5 chip inside is running all these algorithms to enhance the performance out of the speaker. Now, it's most noticeable when watching videos on my Apple 4K TV. I connected the HomePod mini to it. And with my traditional soundbar, what happens is whenever there's an action sequence and there's dialogue, the dialogue gets drowned out by the music score and the sound effects. With computational audio, it does the opposite. So it prioritizes the dialogue. So I'm able to hear the people speaking on screen and the sound effects and the music get toned down a little bit. So that's the magic of the computational audio. And when it comes to watching videos, music, this is something that I really enjoy because I'm not constantly having to adjust the volume just to hear what people are saying. And before I wrap it up here, I just wanna quickly mention some of the notable features of the HomePod mini. Number one, it acts as a HomeKit home hub. And that's important because you'll be able to control your HomeKit devices remotely and it's not gonna cost you a fortune like the original HomePod. Secondly, there are proximity controls. While useful, I just don't see myself using it a whole lot. So basically it allows you to transfer music from your iPhone to the HomePod mini wirelessly. So basically if I'm listening to a song on Pandora, I just place the phone over the HomePod and it transfers it. So it starts playing on the HomePod mini. And then if I'm leaving, going somewhere, and I wanna play that music again onto my iPhone, I just do the same. The intercom feature is a lot more practical, I think, and more useful than the proximity controls because it just allows me to say a message over all the HomePods in my apartment by just asking Siri on my iPhone. And the last thing I wanna talk about here is how the HomePod mini can control your smart home. Now, over the last few years, we've seen more and more HomeKit enabled devices in the home. They range from smart locks to cameras, but it still trails what you have with Alexa or Google Assistant. So while there isn't as much diversity, Siri does well as far as controlling them in the home. I have the Philips Hue lighting system. I just ask Siri to do that and it works well. So yeah, 
This is the speaker that Apple should have released first over the original HomePod. Regardless of that, it's here now. And at $100, I think it still offers better value than just the regular HomePod. In fact, I'd probably tell you to buy two of these HomePod minis because you're gonna get that stereo support with left and right channels. Perfect if you're gonna be watching a lot of movies. But besides that, you have computational audio, good sound. It acts as a HomeKit home hub and the smaller size makes it discreet. So it's a well-rounded speaker. Is it better than some of its competitions? That's debatable but still a great speaker nonetheless. And that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna learn more about anything I talked about in this video, you can check out our website, digitaltrends.com. I'm John Velasco, and I'll see you in my next video.